Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Gesundheit River College in Sacramento, California. This is another proof in my series on proofs in differential uh, calculus, uh, and this proof is for uh, the derivative of an exponential function is equal to the exponential function times the natural log of its base, and Generally, this is found in a first year differential calculus course, and the proof is usually done inside a classroom. However, uh, often I, I like to do my proofs online so that students can review them. Uh, we're going to need a few pieces of prerequisite information here, so I'm going to go write that down or have that written down. Prerequisite knowledge that you're supposed to have, you should know properties of logarithms, specifically so if you take an exponential and raise it to a log base the same base as the base of your exponential, that is the same thing as just having the interior of the exponential. This is actually, uh, most people see this in an uh, algebra course as x is equal to um, b raised to the log base b of x. It's the same notation, I'm just instead of using b, I'm using log base e. Okay. So you should know that, you should know your chain rule. You should also know that the derivative of a constant times x is just the constant itself. Those are the only three pieces of information. Obviously you have to know what derivatives are and all the other fun stuff, but those are the three pieces of information that we need to know for this proof. So I'll hop back here and I'll go ahead and start my proof. I could just do it on this page because it's not that long of a proof. And uh, so we'll start with the left hand side, the claim. Uh, here that the derivative with respect to x of a to the x and I'm going to manipulate that a to the x to look like something else that's derivative with respect to x of and we'll say that's e raised to the natural log of a raised to the x power. Now that may not look like it did very much for us but it did quite a bit because what we could do here is we could uh, take advantage of a property of logarithms and that is if you take the, the logarithm of an exponential it allows you to bring out the exponent. So this will allow us to move that exponent out in front of the logarithm itself. This is going to equal the derivative with respect to x. That's the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to. e raised to the x times the natural log of a. And now I see I can use a nice little chain rule on this. And actually, you know what, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll go ahead and, since you might be new to chain rule, I will take the long way with the chain rule here. So right now we're taking the derivative with respect to x of some function. We'll just go ahead and let uh, y equal e raised to the u power. So I'm just simplifying my function uh, e to the x times the natural log of a into being e to the u, where u, so we're just doing a composite function here, is equal to x times the natural log of a. And you would do this, uh, This I'm just using Leibniz notation, uh, I'm doing this for Leibniz notation, but you do this notation here because you're just simplifying your function down to components here. So you notice that y is actually a function of u, and that u is actually a function of x, right? Because that's the variable that's inside of the function u there. So if we wanted to take the derivative of y, with respect to x, which is what we want to do right here, we want to take the derivative of y, which is e to the junk, but we want to take that derivative with respect to x, you'll first have to hop inside of y here and take the derivative with respect to u, and then hop inside of u and take the derivative with respect to x. As I've mentioned in uh, maybe past videos, a lot of students think that this means that the du's cancel. That is actually not technically true, but visually it does make sense. So um, I tend to tell my students I'm totally okay with it, um, but it, it is technically not true. You should not be able to cancel those du's. So I will say that's the one way you can think about it. There's another way you can think about the chain rule here, that you have two different functions f and g. We have an outer function f of x, which is just e to the x, and an inner function, which is g of x, which happens in this case to be x times the natural log, oops, 
I was already writing my a, the natural log of a. Uh, and so uh, what we're really looking at here is we want to take the derivative with respect to x of f being composed with g of x, right? That's f of g of x. Remember, f of g of x means that where are we seeing x here, I'm going to replace it with g of x, which is x natural log of a. So that's really what we're taking the derivative of here. And we happen to know uh, by the chain rule that this is going to equal f prime evaluated at that simple g of x times uh, g prime evaluated at x. So either way, uh, you could do that. f prime in this case, by the way, uh, evaluated at g of x means, well, f prime itself is e to the x power. And when you evaluate that at g of x, it's going to be e to the x times natural log of a. And then we would take the g, derivative of g and throw that next to it. There's, that's the second way you can think about it. Those are both the technical and true ways you should be thinking about the chain rule. The third way is a way that is more conceptual and I like it. I like to think of the chain rule as um, an onion. And this is not an inappropriate way to think about it. It's just a, a more conceptual way you can think about it. You have an outer function. And by the way, in this case, our outer function is e to the junk. I don't really care. Okay. And then you have an inner function inside of that, and that inner function is the junk itself that you're taking derivative of. Okay. So every time I take a derivative, I look at what function is on that ring. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to actually use my third definition here. I will say, okay, I'm going to take the derivative of this outer ring, so peel that outer ring. What's the derivative of e to the junk? It's e raised to the junk. The junk we have here, in this case, is this stuff right here. So it's e to that power. So that's what our derivative is, is, e to that power. And then when I was a student, I would often do this. I'd say, okay, I peeled that layer. So I'm going to erase that layer, erase it out. And now I see I just have the derivative of junk going on in there. So what's the derivative of that junk? And we happen to know the derivative of x times a constant, remember natural log of a is a constant, is going to be the natural log of a itself right so this is uh, starting to look kind of uh, nice for us so all I'll do is take advantage of the inverse operation to this we not really inverse operation but the opposite direction we pulled the exponent out front now I'm just gonna take this exponent I'll do this in blue and I'll pull it back into the or I'll take this coefficient and pull it back into the exponent so I have e raised to the natural log of a raised to the x times the natural log of a. And of course, e to the natural log base e of a to the x, we know is a to the x natural log of a. And that is exactly where we wanted to go with this. So I know it was a, um, it's actually an incredibly short proof. Uh, but I took my time with it because I wanted to note the three different ways you can think of um, the chain rule. And there's actually other ways you can think of the chain rule as well. But you have the two rigorous ways, which uh, Leibniz notation or the uh, just the definition of a uh, chain rule using function notation. So that's one and two. And then you have a visual way where you're basically peeling the onion. That is the end of this proof.